This yeah. is Chuck from Village Music Shop in Mastic, and we're here today with Elliot Rubinson from Dean Guitars. He's the CEO of Dean Guitars. And how are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you for having us here. Um, you know, this is a, we don't do a lot of clinics, and we're just doing two in the New York area, and this is one of them. Cool. I appreciate you coming. I'm, I, I saw by your smile that you were having fun. Oh, yeah. Well, listen, you know, visiting a great retailer, someone who supports us, and then someone who's able to put on a clinic right in their store and has the facility to do it is very unusual. Well, that's cool. Yeah, and we try to set it up nice so that we can have, you know, a good, good group of people. And, Total uh, and pro. Total I appreciate pro. it. I appreciate it. Now, you, uh, you've been in this business for quite some time. You told me that you've been playing for how many years now? Well, here, here's my history. I'll tell you the, the, the story of my life. I, I started in this business like everyone else does playing. started when I was maybe 13 or 14 playing bass guitar. Did it for a while. realized I wasn't going to make a living doing it. <laughs> uh, started a retail store out of my house, a small uh, retail store. I decided to call Thoroughbred Music and built it into uh, 300 employees and $50 million revenue per year just got so big and so exhausting. I sold it off, and I bought Dean guitars kind of out of the ashes and resurrected Dean. And uh, I decided, now that I had some free time along with working, it was time to start playing again. I've heard of thoroughbred music. Yeah. Most and, people have. And you've played with so many people. You were telling me Michael Shanker. Yeah. Yeah, Uli John Roth, right. uh, Vinnie Moore I still Vinnie tour Moore. with, of course, you know, uh, Michael Angelo Michael. Badio. Uh, but I started playing. I hadn't played in 30 years. I was building guitars for Michael Shanker starting in 2004. And one day he said, look, uh, my bass player can't make this tour. Do you know anybody? And I said, as a matter of fact, I'm a bass player. And he looked at me, you are? And I went down and auditioned and finished the tour with him. He said, you know what? I really like the way you play. Why don't you come to Europe? We'll do a European tour. And then we did a South American tour. We played in Tokyo. And we played all over Japan. And I did that for three or four years with Michael, which was a real honor. And uh, he's an amazing guitar player and, of course, a legend and inspiration to so many rock stars today. Oh, me too. I mean, I saw him at least a dozen times, if not more. Did I you? Mean, that, with my UFO? Brothers, with UFO. He's my brother's favorite band. And every time they came into town, it, it didn't matter. If, if they were playing four gigs that week, we were there at those four gigs that week. You know, it was just, we were there. Well, he, he has that style, the finesse, the vibrato, the tone. Yeah. That's just, you know, that was Back then was, was something that just wasn't around. He no. was, he was a, definitely a, a refreshment of what was happening back then. Well, it's like Uli is the same way. Uli and Michael, you know, both German guitar players. And when we play and we play in L.A., you look around backstage and Metallica's there. Or, you know, just so many people come to see these two guys play. Yeah, I mean, I, I had mentioned that I was, uh, I was in, a, you know, a club in Long Island uh, watching UFO. And I'm getting Twitter notifications from Kirk Hammett from Metallica yeah. because he was there too. He's like, okay, this is an awesome show. I can't believe this is great because he loves UFO as well. Yeah, he was on Eddie Trunk with Michael, and uh, he's come to see us play with Michael quite a few times. Yeah. But uh, who wouldn't? I mean, who wouldn't? He's the man. Yeah, and he knows how to play on stage. He doesn't play too loud. He plays at the right volume, writes great songs. He knows how to arrange a set list. Dude, that was the thing that got me. He knows how to put the set list together five minutes before the gig. That's just incredible. It just flows right along. It flows along. And keeps people engaged, which exactly. is important. You know, that's the set list is really, really important, and to have the songs that work well in that set list. No, the, really you know, the one problem too. he has is that you know if you play 18 songs a night, there's 14 songs people want to hear over and over again. So he has maybe four or five slots to experiment with. Everything else has got to be you know UFO and MSG you gotta, material. You got to play that stuff, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. If somebody came and they didn't hear what they wanted They'd to hear, be disappointed. Like, oh man, you know. Be very disappointed. So, yeah. Yeah. so now about Dean Guitars, I mean, uh, you steered this ship and you took it from the ashes and you brought this thing up to a really awesome guitar company. Well, thanks. I you know, it's um, you know times are changing. Uh, you know, Dean Guitars back in the '80s was really a USA guitar company for high-end rock stars, and that's not what you know a guitar company needs to be made of. A guitar company needs to have a lot of price points needs to have a lot of variety, needs to make, in my opinion, needs to make acoustics, electrics, you know, uh, bluegrass instruments, you know, we even make ukulele. So we really broaden the offerings, put a lot of value in the guitar at every price point. So when you pick up a guitar, you say, typically what we hear is, how can this only be 249 or 349? Because there's so much value in the guitar. Exactly. Well, one of my things, and I'm giving away my sales tip right here, um, you know, my secret, but I'll, I'll typically put a guitar in somebody's hand and I'll let them play it. First, I'll show it to them, especially with a Dean guitar. There's so much bang for the buck. I'll show them all the inlays. Look at the mother of pearl and the abalone inlays. Look at these, these inlays on the neck. Right, I mean, these right. aren't just dots. Look at some of these. 
This, this is awesome. Intricate design. All CNC cut, perfectly laid. It's beautiful. And I give it to them and I let them play it. I tone and I tell them it's a co-wood guitar, it's a mahogany, because there's all different kinds of woods. The exotic is that you can get on the guitars, on the, on the acoustic especially, and the finishes on the electric. And then I say, I mean, you've got great machines on there. You've got a floating tremolo if it's an electric. How much do you think this guitar is? Right, right. And they tell you a price. And Invariably it's always, higher, right? It's always, it's always higher. Right. And you say, this guitar is only this much. Well, it's $250. I'm, and they're like, no way, they're sold already. Well, I'm not aware of too many guitar companies that have guitars for you know, $99 and guitars for, you know, in the case of Uli's guitar, it's uh, $9,000. More, it's like $15,000. So, and everything in between. So, you know, you're buying, you know, we have this top down method where people look and go, wow, you know, they make $15,000 guitars and I can buy something for $300. It, it, it gives you, you know, a, a sense of security. Yeah, but it's a, you know, and it's it's a great. I think that in order to get an awesome guitar, you don't have to spend so much money, you know, especially for somebody who's coming in who might be beginning, or even a professional player who really wants a nice guitar. Well, one of the other reasons we do so well is if you're a bass player, for instance, and you have your primary bass that you like to play, but all of a sudden you look, hey, here's an eight-string bass I can buy for whatever five hundred dollars, or a twelve-string bass, or a fretless acoustic. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, you'll start a collection of eight or ten instruments because you can afford to do so. Right. If the instruments are two thousand a piece, you know your wife isn't going to like it, and you probably can't afford it. Right. I hear a lot of that. You know, sure my you wife's going to kill me. Yeah, okay. I'm going to have to tell her I found this pedal on the street or something. Yeah. I always had come up with some kind of story. You know. Do you have any uh, any really cool guitars that are coming out? Maybe new shapes or something that you. You've been working on it. You can let us know. And well, you know, at NAM, the NAM show is every January in California, as you well know, from being in the industry so long. And we had over 30 new models there. Uh, we have a new shape called the Icon, which is kind of like um, a, a double cutaway, kind of PRS-ish, um, but with uh, different pickups, uh, a 5A flame top, just a beautiful instrument. We're trying not to be just a pointy guitar company. You know, we have so many artists who play the pointed guitars. Of course, you know, there's a late great Dimebag Darrell and Dave Mustaine and, um, you know, Michael Schenker with V's. And now we're trying to do some more, you know, more conservative instruments so that we have something to offer everyone. So the icon fits into that realm. Uh, on the pointy front, you know, Dave Mustaine called me and said, look, I have this idea. I went to Jerusalem. I have an idea for a guitar which is blood red with gold, 14 karat gold leaf on the top. And it's just an incredible concept. We're only making 35 of them. Most of them are pre-sold. So, you know, we're, we're lucky enough to have artists who have been able to give us some direction and, and, and inspiration into their models. Well, you hit the nail right on the head there because I, I realized quite some time ago, years ago, that there are some models in the Dean line that, you know, there's limited serial numbers. There's only 100 of these. These creates are demand. special. It creates demand. And there's a whole underlying collectible, uh, you know, I guess, you know, world out there that like to collect those Dean guitars. The Missing 100, you know, some of those right. things Lost like that. Lost 100, right. Lost right. 100. There's so many people out there that it's just like, you know, quietly collecting all of these special Well, Dean everybody guitars. wants something that's limited because they realize it'll have value. We're not going to make another 100 next week. Uh, which is going to diminish their value. So if we say we're only making 100 initial Michael Schenker black and white Vs, people know if they buy that, that guitar is going to be worth some money. You know, we have history from dating back to 1976. You know, this is not a fly-by-night guitar company here. We sell hundreds of thousands of guitars all over the world. We're in demand all over the world. We're on the biggest stages in the world. And we have something to, you know, scream about. And you pretty much have offerings, like you said, for everything. I mean, especially now with the ukuleles blowing up. You know, it uh, seems like everybody wants to grab a ukulele now. You have so Especially many Especially an ML ukulele. Yeah. So, uh, There's so many different types of ukuleles that you have, plus you do the bluegrass instruments and so forth. And ukuleles, you know, it's a $99 purchase. You know, everybody can afford to buy a ukulele. It's easy to play. It's four uh, strings. You can play chords immediately. You know, because with the kids playing video games, they just don't want the time, you know, in a lot of instances into learning an instrument. Well, a uke's pretty easy to learn. You know, and you also started the uh, Luna Guitar Company, right, which I, go ahead, which I think is awesome with the inlays on the faces and the piece guitar. I think that's great. Well, you know, Luna started out initially as a girl guitar company, and then we realized there's more guys sending warranty cards than girls. So let's stop trying to be just for females. Let's have things that appeal to everybody. And that company, believe it or not, most people don't realize, is as large as Dean Guitars. 
it's just not known as well. And for people that don't know about the Luna brand, um, I can tell you that they play very well for a smaller guitar. We sell a lot of the smaller guitars to college kids that are going away. Right. Because they want to take it with them for the dorm, but they don't want a big full-size guitar because space is a concern. And it's great because you got a nice backpack, gig bag that you put that thing in, you can take it where you want to go with it. It's not huge, but it still feels great, it still plays great, and it still sounds great. You know, we have 15 instruments in that Safari series, in that travel series, with all different kinds of cutaway, around laser etched around the sound hole, just all different designs, so if you don't like one, I'm sure there's something right behind it you will like. And again, like we said, a lot of bang for the buck with those guitars. They're a $150 guitar, I mean. You can't beat that. Yeah, you really can't beat that. yeah so uh, it's, it's, it's been a great ride. I've, it's a, a labor of love. It's fun to be doing something where you have a creative input. It's fun to be dealing with artists because I love the live performance end of music so much. So it really embodies everything that I love to do. Great. And now you're playing too, so you got the best of both worlds. Exactly. You've kind of got a little bit of everything going on exactly. there. Exactly. I have a reason to get out of my house and play now. <laughs> there you go. Under the guise of Dean Guitars, right? That's right. I'll be back. Uh, right. I'm exactly. going on a European tour. Yeah, I'll be back. See you next year, right? See you next year. <laughs> so, what's the longest tour that you've been on since you've been? Um, uh, I've done a few six week tours, and it's tough to balance work. You know, you're on a tour bus all day all day long and you have to be able to keep up with your emails and phone calls. But yeah, I've done a few four and six week tours. Which for me is a long time. It's a long time to be away from the business. Exactly right. When you're so. running, a, running a big ship like that. Yeah, right. Absolutely. So, so but uh, like I said, it's a labor of love, and you, know, if you need a bass player, call me. There you go. He's looking for work. <laughs> bass player for hire. Bass player for hire. I'll have to get him for my band. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> bass players all have to come by today, yeah, so are. that's always a good thing. Well, I thank you. Thanks. It's a pleasure. Elliot, it's always a pleasure. Thanks for having us, and I uh, hope thank to come back coming. and do this again. That'd be great. Thank all you. Right.